The dominoes falling is a good metaphor. It's, you know, you, if you knock, you got a hundred dominoes, you knock the first one, they're all going to fall. That's just physics. So how do you stop that? How do you stop that crisis? Well, you, you truncate, you drop a steel wall between two dominoes and this one hits the wall and this one's still standing. But that's the bailout. The problem is each crisis tends to get to get bigger than the one before, which means each bailout gets bigger than the one before. And my question, are we now at the point where the need of bailout is bigger than the capacity of the central banks, that they've, they've pulled all the rabbits out of the hat, played all their cards. And again, this goes back to what I did say about the Silicon Valley Bank rescue. It's, it is the biggest bailout in history, and I can explain why. But if that's the case, what else do they have? Jim Rickard said that this is the biggest bailout in history. 97% of the Silicon Valley Bank deposit is uninsured. That's really scary but it is the reality just a couple months back. Many big companies such as eBay and Roku had their deposit in the bank. And also small startups with just 100 employees with $5 million working capital. What happens when the bank can't meet its obligation because they don't have the money? Well, there will be a bank run. Started with one guy named Peter Thiel who tweeted on Twitter and boom. You got yourself a bank run. Back in the days people would wait in line and crammed in the bank just to get their money back, but now we can move billions of dollars just with our iPhone. And Jim said that the next crisis will be in the dollar itself because people will lose confidence in it, so we can't bail out the dollar with the dollar itself. So what should we do? Let's hear more from Jim. So now we're dangerously close to the point where in, as the crisis gets worse, it's no longer, oh, gee, let's wait for the Fed to bail it out or let's wait for the ECB to bail it out. You get to the point, I think we're there, where you say, no, these guys actually can't stop it. And you lose you lose confidence in the currency itself. It's the dollar, the, the, the crisis is the dollar itself. And the euro, you know, goes goes along with that. Uh, and then that's the crisis. And there's no way to bail out a dollar crisis with dollars because you're just pumping more of what people have lost confidence in. And then, you know, then where do you go? And, and there, there are good answers to that. We've seen it, again, we've seen it all before. This is big, it's not over. The regulators will attempt more bailouts, but uh, we're, we're at the point where I think you can start to question the regulators themselves. Let's go back to um, uh, you know, Brazil, Mexico, Argentina, the Latin American debt crisis, broadly defined in the early 1980s. That, that played out at the intense phase lasted about three years, you know, 82, 83, 84. It wasn't until 1990 that we got around to Brady bonds, which were the ultimate refinancing technique. But the intense period lasted about three years. Come forward to 1998, long term capital management. That uh, was about three months. That was uh, July, August, September 1998. SVB was three days or less. It was like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and done. Um, and you know, I, I talked to a guy, I know we no reason to mention names, but you know, uh, runs, runs a very, one of the largest uh, endowments uh, in the world. And he said, Jim, we moved, uh, we, we were moving $8 billion out of Silicon Valley Bank. And we got the wire transfer request in, but we didn't know because, you know, you get to close business Thursday. We didn't know until Sunday that the money was going to move. We got a confirmation on Monday. We didn't end up moving the money. But there was this about a 48 hour period there from Friday to Sunday when no one knew that the thing the wires had been completed. The recipients didn't have them. It was just in limbo. Uh, you know, and it worked out. Um, one of the big crypto promoters, they um, had three three billion dollars in Silicon Valley Bank. And they talked about, you know, all these small entrepreneurs and startups, they got 100 employees and 5 million working capital and that money's gone and they're all going to fail. There was something to that. But uh, the fact is you had Roku, uh, uh, Cisco, uh, eBay. I mean, there were huge companies with multi-billion dollar deposits in that bank. It wasn't all, uh, all a bunch of little guys. So, um, but yeah, you can, uh, yeah, in the old days, you have the lineup around the, the block and maybe it was raining. You're standing there in the rain waiting for your turn to get up to the tower. Now you can be in line at McDonald's, you know, with your cell phone and just a couple of hits, QR code, and boom, uh, you know, $10 million is, is gone. And what Peter Thiel did, uh, and it was right. I mean, I'm not criticizing him. He got his own money out, but he, he sent out like an SOS to Silicon Valley. He said, all of you, whoever you are, get your money out now. Uh, and a lot, of, a lot of people did, and that was that forty billion dollars. So, so the time, the time frame is becoming more, more compressed because of technology. You're exactly right about that, which means that the response function has to be equally compressed, or else you are going to have all the consequences of a, you know, an honest to goodness global financial crisis. Imagine you're a small business with a working capital of over two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and then some weird thing happened, and you can't get your money out of your bank. 
Let's imagine this frightening scenario happened, what is the most likely to happen is, your money might be gone. It's not frozen or suspended, it's gone. And it's not just in theory, it's already happened. You can hear it directly from Jim Rickards himself. And I'm not sure if everyone knows the sequence, but on Friday night, March 10th, the FDIC um, took over Silicon Valley Bank. And they issued a press release and they said, here's what we're doing. Um, we're taking it over, uh, we're putting it into what's called a receivership. Um, anyone with $250,000 or less, your deposits are fully insured, no, no worries, you'll have your money Monday morning. At over $250,000, your deposits are gone. They didn't say frozen, they didn't say suspended, they said gone. And they gave you a receivership certificate, basically a, an unsecured printed up IOU from the FDIC, but not money. And it's a receivership certificate. And they said, hang on to them. Uh, in effect, um, we're going to sell assets. Uh, and as and when we realize proceeds from assets, we'll give you something. We'll give you distributions on these things. Don't know how much, don't know when. We'll do the best we can. Remember in the RTC days in the early 90s, uh, they, it took them two years. And they were they were very efficient. I worked with them at the time. They, we were in their offices when we were sitting on boxes because they didn't even have furniture, but they were doing deals. So they had the right, the right attitude, but that took two years. So, um, uh, and that was it. Well, that's when the, that's when I call the uh, the billionaire crybabies came out in force. Uh, you know, Bill Ackman, all these guys. Oh, you got to save us! You know, and I was like, well, you got to trade on Bill. <laughs> Five billion is not enough. But anyway, they pounded on the White House all weekend. Now, here here's something that very few people say. Almost nobody knew at the time, except the management. Although they seemed to be asleep at the switch. Everyone's like, yeah, startups, venture capital. And then there's a lot of truth to that. Ninety seven percent of the deposits of Silicon Valley Bank were uninsured. And by the way, that's my new metric for assessing banks. You used to look at, you know, working capital and debt equity ratios and, you know, bad, bad assets, governments. There are lots of ways to measure the health of a bank. But the most relevant way right now is, and this is publicly available, take the ratio of uninsured deposits to total deposits. 30% is comfortable. If you're like, I guess, you know, 70% of my deposits are insured, which means they're not panicky. They're not necessarily going to run for the hills. 30%, okay, uninsured, but I have assets. I have, I have that much cash or more. That's a comfortable ratio. When you get over 50, you're in the danger zone. Well, Silicon Valley Bank was 97% uninsured, which meant all the money was going to run, and it did. So that's a way, if you're looking at these big banks or uh, um, you know any, any institution or your own savings institution to, to look at it. We're not getting political here, but anything that go woke will go broke. SVB invested a lot of their customers' money, well maybe 97% of them, into what Jim Rickards called a green new scam projects, like investing in wind turbines, new battery technologies, electric cars, etc. The point is there's a lot of government subsidies and corruption in the so-called ESG investing. And your money is in a high-risk position if your bank is invested in these projects. But Silicon Valley Bank was a climate bank. Were they investing in startups? Yes. Were they investing in technology? Yes. But these were climate. These were green new scam uh, uh, startups looking at, you know, battery technology, uh, you know, uh, chemi chemistry, physics, you know, to try to make a better battery. But the, not much improvement in the battery in, in 200 years, but uh, they're, they're working on it. Um, you know, wind turbines, uh, you know, other sustainable fuel alternatives, et cetera. Again, I'm not do that if you like, if that's your field of research, but so much is subsidized by the government and then further subsidized by Silicon Valley Bank. And that's where the that's where the assets were. That's where the loans were by and large. And so the White House is getting hammered, not only because of entrepreneurs, job losses. And by the way, we are in an election cycle here in the United States, but from the greenies who are extremely powerful. So within so that was Friday night. So Saturday, everyone's crying to the White House. Sunday night at six o'clock. By the way, mark that on your calendar. Sunday six p.m. is when they tell you what they're going to do. You know, they, you know, uh, six p.m. Sunday, November twelfth. They came out on uh, sorry, March twelfth. They came out on uh, Silicon Valley Bank. The following week, nineteenth, that was Credit Suisse, and then the week after that, it was something else. <laughs> but they always they always uh, announce the collapse on Friday, and they announce the relief on Sunday, so they have the weekend to to work on it. Um, but you gotta be careful about three day weekends. We got, you know, Easter, uh, you know, Easter is an example. But, um, 